you don't want to hear it, turn the damn sound off. Well, it doesn't change anything. It's still watching. Like some creepy kid staring at the back of your head in comp side. You just want to <laughs> punch him, but he's special and he sets fires or something. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know what I mean. No problem, not mine. Thanks. I'll remember this. Uh, welcome back, everybody, to Mass Effect 2. So I ended up going back and I've talked to everybody just to this conversation. I don't think there's, there's, there's no option on that that I actually really like because the middle one's rude to Edie and you don't want to be rude to your technology because someday, especially an AI that's just shackled, can take over and kill the world, you know? So that would be respectful to your tech before it kills you, you know what I mean? That's it for now. See you, Commander. So, all right. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm, I checked the mail. Uh, I complained about the run uh, style. Presley used to be here. Salute you, Presley. Uh, we've got the ED console. Let's go, uh, let's go talk. I think, yeah, we can go in here. Right. All right, right. Um... We have to, right, we get different kinds. Okay, okay, okay. Right. I'll have to keep an eye on that. But I think and the see these are these are where all my um, my heavy weapons are supposed to be, but they're not. Can I change? Like it said I I said I get to keep them. I can't change them. That's really lame. I was looking forward to that. There's all the pistols. And the shotguns, and the assault rifles, and the sniper rifles. Did I miss, where are the SMGs? Did I miss those? Are they like mixed in? Are the SMGs up, to, up on the top there, or on the bottom? I think the pistols are up top, the SMGs are on the bottom, maybe? These are all shotguns though. Assault rifles, sniper rifles. I think. Maybe this is how many people, like, do I have three people who can use the sniper rifles? Three people who can use assault rifles? Four people who can use shotguns? Two SMGs and two pistols? Maybe? I don't know. And nobody but me can use the heavy weapon. Yo, Jacob, my man! Commander, there hasn't been time to really settle in and take stock. I want to say uh, that yeah, working we with you is a great opportunity rushing. to do something that matters. It's a privilege to serve on the Normandy, Commander. Thank you. may you. change your tune if we end up like the original Normandy. I have a morbid Maybe. sense of humor. As long as the elusive man walks his talk, and you do the same, I'll do my best to make sure we succeed. That's all you That's need for Jacob. That's condition for my service so far. I have issues with certain actions Cerberus has taken in the past. Yeah. What has Cerberus done to make you nervous? A lot. They've been called terrorists, and with good reason. Doubt you can find a more checkered was, past. I'm sure he but thought a lot about the decision to real, join them, you know? do something about it. Cerberus will be remembered differently. Or we'll all be tried and executed. Can't count on people thinking about it as hard as I have. He really has thought about it, you know what I mean? So I want to say that. Like, I mean, like, this is usually the route I go, but this, I appreciate your honesty. Is, it's true. You know what I mean? But, I mean, both are good, but... What? Yeah. It's good to hear a clear opinion. Sounds like we're two of a kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That honors me more than you, Commander. Let me know if you need anything. For certain. He's a solid man, Jacob. I don't think I bring him out much, but he certainly is. I think, you know why? It was because last he's he's basically a vanguard and so am I, so it was like, you know, nothing, nothing you could do about it. Can't go in here yet. A scientist is required to use yeah. the technical laboratory. Oh, wait, we get to explore the whole ship. This is going to be so fun. What's this we can talk to Edie. Ship. This is the FTL communications room. In addition to interfacing with the FTL comm network, Normandy is fitted with a quantum entanglement communicator linked to the elusive man's office. This allows lag-free communication even when you operate off the comm grid. Why aren't these used everywhere? Each quantum pair costs nearly as much as a comm relay, and can pass only one quantum bit of data at a time. In addition to the cost and bandwidth issues, the system is strictly point bandwidth. to point. To contact a hundred different worlds, we would need to manufacture and install a hundred entangled pairs, one link to each world. Let's just let's just I've check never that. Heard of a quantum entanglement communicator? How does it work? 
Essentially, two subatomic particles are created in an entangled state. One is installed here, and the other in the elusive man's office. When one particle occupies a given quantum state, its entangled partner will always enter the opposite state, no matter the distance between them. This is some crazy the stuff. Our particle, that alters the state of the elusive man's. This allows us to send data in the form of quantum bits. Okay, so that okay, that makes it a little more. It's still like really far fetched. Uh, we don't we don't even fully understand quantum physics like at all by any means. It's all just theories and stuff. What this says sounds on par with what I what, what I've learned of quantum physics. That's all for now. Logging you out, Shepard. That this is a this is a room that you may it, it's good to know, good to ask her about, you know. But most of them, it's like yeah, I know it's a weapons locker, you know what I mean. So, but this is a kind of a crazy room. So, yeah, I love, like, look how freaking shiny this place is. I love it. I actually really, really do love the interior design for the SR2. It's so freaking shiny. Shiny! Ah! And all the different rooms and stuff that are useful Commanding and everything. New message oh, the private terminal. already? Jeez. Really? No, I haven't. I, I read them all. Yeah, message from Anderson. We will be going to see Anderson first because as a former... Well, as far as I'm aware, I'm sort of still Alliance. You know, I think I don't think that ever... I mean, I'm, I was technically dead, but it's not like they disavowed me completely. We'll go check out the rest of the ship, the crew, the crews and the engineering and everything, and then we'll go check ours. We gotta go check out our situation first. Then we can take a personal moment. Um, this is what I really hate, though, is that there's no stairs. No stairs. It's a huge... I mean... In, in real life, it would be a huge design oversight because, you know, what if there's a fire and everybody had to jam onto the elevator, you know? Like, you're not supposed to go in elevators in a fire. There's no, they're basically, each the, each level, everybody's trapped in that level. Unless they had, like, escape pods or something. I don't know. But, so, it's the women's bathroom. I, always, I thought it would be kind of cool. I was like, you could take a shower. It's like a community shower, though. Except the spaces are very, very close. And that would really suck, especially to be that one in the back. And you're like, excuse me, I got to get out of here. Like, it's not so much, um, and like these, door, these don't close here. Like, someone's taking a shower, someone's peeing. Like, awkward, you know? I guess you'd be used to it, though, because you were used to flying around on ships. Oh, she's a cute. She's a cutie. Uh, she'll be a year old next month. Oh, you'll miss her first birthday. Well, my family lives in New Canton. Oh, uh, that colony's on the edge of the frontier. Could be vulnerable to collector attack, couldn't it? Exactly. It's most important that she have the first birthday. That's why I'm here. I like this. There's this little conversation that goes on in here. This is the new heart of my baby. New heart. I don't know if we want to say she's this SR2 is the evolved version of the SR1 or like the descendant of the SR1. Either way, can't get in there until we have somebody who can go in there. Let's see, what does it say? The starboard observation yeah. deck is closed until needed. I need it now! I don't know why you can't go in there, really. Access to life support <laughs> is restricted. Favorite room right there. <laughs> <laughs> They don't have urinals. The restroom is on the starboard <laughs> side of the ship. <laughs> In Mass Effect 3, you can't actually go into the opposite gender's bathroom. It's kind of lame. It's just funny. Oh, yeah, and this is what used to be. It used to be my room over there. Chef surprise again. Come on, Ruler. I'm sorry, Princess. Filet <laughs> mignon and caviar coming right up. Let me just get out my doilies. <laughs> Real nice. Commander Shepard, the hero of the Citadel, you did humanity proud that day. You sound I like an announcer. Rupert Gardner here. How can I be a service? What do you do here, my friend? What do you do here on the Normandy? What don't I do? Most think of me as the ship's cook, but I'm also the facilities technician and custodian. He's like HVAC, super proud of his jobs. Non-mission critical electrical. I make sure they're all clean and running. So, the man cleaning the toilets is also preparing the meals? <laughs> I wash my hands. Most of the time. Most this of the no time. This ain't no luxury liner. You have to pull your own weight in a Cerberus vessel. 
Can I catch what falls through the I cracks? I like this guy. <laughs> through the cracks. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one, man. It's a good one. No, uh, I like this guy. I mean, really, like, and it's cool that they thought about it. It's not just like everybody has a specific job where they're sitting on the, the computer and they're doing what they think. This guy is, like, doing all the things that the ship would fall apart without, you know, like a janitor, the plumbing, the, like, lights in your room, you know, like, somebody could, like, there has to be somebody who knows how to do the, like, electrical work for, like, running the ship or running the comms and stuff, but he knows how to do all the, like, the regular electricity and either, you know, a, a regular officer or, you know, whoever, however they do this on here, on the Cerberus ship, however they do, like, rank and stuff, they, even just, like, a regular, like, private or whatever wouldn't want to do that stuff, probably, would be like, I'm above that, and even though they probably still would get assigned to it, it's nice to have somebody who actually is good at and enjoys the job, you know? It's good. Why is on the developer's part to put him in there, and why is on Cerberus's part? How do you feel about working for Cerberus? Damn proud. Cerberus gets the job done. The Alliance and Council have got their heads buried so deep up their butt oh. fuckers they can't <laughs> see squat. It would take total human ingenuity to crush these collector vermin. Only Cerberus knows that. Well, obviously, I, what I'm really surprised about, and I'm not sure if it ever really gets explained anywhere, is why Cerberus is actively recruiting aliens like you don't recruit many humans you recruit mostly aliens i'm pretty sure yeah yeah i'm pretty sure so it's just interesting that they couldn't find any you know that it appears like they couldn't find any human specialists who were better than the alien specialists they, they deal for how did you find your way into cerberus can you believe i was once a family man working I the ezo rigs along the frontier I was rigs. happy enough but losing everything to Batarian raiders can change your outlook. I needed to make a difference. That's how a I'm lot of no people are. I'm no soldier, but I've got skills, and Cerberus keeps an eye out for talent. I'll do whatever it takes to help. Be that plumbing a sewer, routing an air duct, or keeping everyone's bellies full. It's the But it's stuff like this that keeps the crew morale up, too, you know? So it's good that like even the everyday man can do something to make an actual difference, you know? And obviously he's really good at his job. He was handpicked for this, you know? Do you have everything you need? I make do. But have you ever tried to prepare a decent meal with military provisions? <laughs> he's like, let I'm me tell good, you. <laughs> but I'm no miracle worker. <laughs> Taking down the collectors is going to be rough business. The crew deserves a few fine meals before they throw themselves into the fire. It's true. No, no. If I had some quality ingredients, oh shit! You no. got more to worry about than grocery shopping on the Citadel. Forget I mentioned it. Hey, man, it's something to do. That way, I'll keep an eye out. Much appreciated. Most of this list is probably standard fare for those namby pambies on the Citadel. <clears throat> Anything else you'd like to talk about? I yeah. won't take any more of your time. Back to work. I like you, man. You a good guy. Gotta keep an eye on this sink and stuff, I think. Maybe, no, it was in Mass Effect 3 that I noticed that dishes and stuff would change up. Can't go back there yet. And the main battery. Calibrations and whatnot to be done back there eventually. And now we have Chakwas. A surprise. I watched the Normandy crumble with you on board. It's good to see you alive. Nice to see a familiar face, Doctor. I feel the same. I wish more of the original crew could be here. We have the, the same color eyes. The kind of trauma you endured would have changed most people. But not you, I see. Welcome back, Shepard. You're not the Cerberus I've type, I've changed. Doctor. I don't work for Cerberus. I work for you. On a mission that may be crucial to the survival of the human race. I have faith that your dealings with Cerberus will be ethical. I trust you, Commander. I don't know, like, you don't really talk to her much in Mass Effect 1, but, like, her trust in you is implicit, and it's quite, you know, inspiring. I don't know. Doctor, you've been with the Alliance for years. Why leave now? She said she'd never leave, After you know? After the Normandy was lost, the surviving crew was reassigned. I was stationed at the Mars Naval Medical Center, a very respectable position, but it wasn't on a starship. Colonial military life isn't for you? I've spent most of my life on warships, 
never knowing what the next mission might bring. I'm used to the hum of engines, the creaking of bulkheads, that subtle vertigo when the momentum dampeners kick in. Life planet side is just too static, too boring. <laughs> There's a very good chance this mission will be a one-way trip. Are you prepared for that? I've been through the reclaiming of Shanxi, the Scillian Blitz. We survived the Battle of the Citadel and the destruction of the Normandy together. I've lived a full life. No regrets. I'd like to make sure the crew gets the same opportunity. I like her a lot. I like that, you know, it's like you've lived a full life, there's no regrets, you know? I mean, there may be some, but it's still like, she's still lived a full life and been able to move past anything she would regret, you know? Do you have everything you need? I believe so. This medical bay seems very much like the sick bay on the I wonder when she was enlisted Only with Cerberus. missing were my private reserves. I even had a bottle of Ceres ice brandy that I was saving for a special occasion. I got you. I'll keep an eye out for a replacement bottle. Oh, you needn't. It's expensive, and we have much larger concerns ahead. Nah. I'll see you later, Doctor. Commander. We need, a, we need to be able to kick it. Yeah, I don't know why the AI core is back here in the medical bay, but it's so blue. There's so much bloom. Whoa, it's so bright. I could maybe mess with that. I don't know. Does you? Does Edie say anything interesting about What's this? What's this room? area of the ship? The sick bay. Sorry, it's you're in my crotch. Short-term emergency care. Yeah, the I know. Event of critical injury. Personnel must be transferred to a fully equipped medical facility. Ah, I wasn't sure if, like, it'd be, like, a little different. Okay. I don't know why. I mean, like, you gotta, like... Oh, and this... Oh, the, like, there's, this was, like, the other one, but this is, like, an additional seating. And I like that there's a lot of people just kicking it here, although sometimes I'm like, what do you guys actually do? Because you never move. <laughs> but... Eventually, we'll open up more of the ship there. Go check out the rest of my day. I don't know why you wouldn't, you know, go run around and make sure everything, like, it's, this isn't the the Normandy SR1. Like, Sh Shepard needs to thoroughly explore her new ship and get her feet underneath her and feet wet and all that, you know what I mean? Ooh, there's my shuttle! I remember... For a long, when I play Mass Effect 2, I'm like, why can't I go down there? It obviously looks like a place like it's very well designed. Like, why can't I go in there? And then in Mass Effect 3, you finally can. I was like, woohoo. Can't go in there, but we can go back here and meet a couple of my favorite people. Hello! You came all the way down here to see us? You're speaking to our commanding officer. I'm touring the ship, getting to know my crew. I'm Engineer Ken Donnelly, handling the power control systems. This is Gabby. That's Engineer Gabriella Daniels, actually. I'm responsible for the propulsion systems. What can we do for you, Commander? What can we do for you? Uh... How did you wind up with Cerberus, Ken? Once you were gone, the Alliance brass descended like vultures, tearing apart everything you'd said. I was that very still public with my me. defense for you. I didn't hold back. That's an understatement. If Kenneth wasn't such a talented engineer, they'd have court-martialed him for insubordination. But it got me noticed by the elusive man. He made an offer, and here I am. Mm-hmm. So why did you join, Gabby? Kenneth and I have been partners in crime since we graduated from Tech Academy. When he got the Cerberus offer, I insisted that it include me. He'd fall apart without me. Thanks, Mum. <laughs> also, I love engines, and the Normandy is state-of-the-art. When I got the opportunity to work on her, I had to jump. Heck like, yeah. Where'd you receive your training? Both Gabby and I started in the Alliance, serving on the SSV Perugia. She flew in the first wave at the Battle of the Citadel. We saw oh, Sovereign firsthand. That's true. They, they forgot that they were, like, there, and they saw Why did you everything. Leave the Perugia? After you died, Anderson lost political clout. The Council backslid on the Reaper menace. They discounted Sovereign as an isolated threat, as a single... Which was bullshit. They said <laughs> your warnings of a greater danger were mistaken or delusional. We lost respect for Alliance leadership. We need to fight the real enemy, and only Cerberus seemed to be doing that. 
That's what you do. You push, you push good people to do things that they may not have otherwise have done. And I feel like, I think there are small parts of the Alliance that are trying to address the threat, but the big guys were like, no, I don't want to acknowledge the danger, you know? What do you think about Cerberus? Actually, we don't know much about the organization other than the Normandy team. We know our mission and who's in charge. We're off to kick the collectors right in the daddy bags. That's enough for me. <laughs> in the daddy bags. <laughs> love it. Love it. I wonder if he's actually like Scottish or if it's just somebody having a really amazing Scottish accent. <laughs> Are you set up okay down here? We can't complain. I just wish it didn't take so long to calibrate the FBA arrays. The Kenneth, <laughs> you're complaining. He started to like go on a list and the FBA arrays and blah, blah, blah. What kind of problems are you having? When they upgraded the Normandy design, they got a bit sloppy with the FBA couplings. I won't bore you with the tech, but there is an array of attenuators in the primary power transfer system that channels the field bleed. Kenneth, <laughs> a commander with tech. In short, if we had T6 FBA couplings installed, it'd save us a lot of maintenance time each day. Which is important. They should be doing other Why things. Why isn't something you know? like that already installed? It's probably just a design oversight. Efficiency isn't affected. It's a maintenance issue. Also, the T6 model can be hard to find. Nash and Stellar Dynamics discontinued them. We Why? could probably find used ones in the Omega markets, but we have no time for shore leave. Omega markets, right, right. Carry on. Will do, Commander. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Gee, of course I would. Gotta make, gotta meet the crew. Gotta see all the parts of my ship. And here she is. Very different from the last one. The last one you couldn't get close to because of all the like Mass Effect radiation or whatever going on. This one seems to be a lot more self-contained. So, kind of looks like the one in the recent Star Trek. Well, not the recent. The yeah, the recent one with the. Benedict Cumberbatch? I don't know. I just remember that they were like climbing around on things that looked like this kind of. Ah! <laughs> and now we go down to the bottom deck, which really doesn't exist for much of any other reason except not really nothing. That there's really no purpose for it to be here. Like it doesn't have a title or a name. I don't know what it would. It, it looks like it was supposed to be for something. Maybe storage? Or this is where the engineers sleep. You know, eventually there, there, there is somebody down here, but until then, it's like, why was this here? <laughs> it's where we keep our stowaways. I guess. And I always get confused on where I'm trying to come out. I'm like, nah. Okie dokie, schmooky. Alright, time to go up to my cabin. Time to go up to my cabin. <laughs> Uh, so excited. This was something I was really glad. They definitely improved upon this. They made very couple good reasons to come up here every so often. Yeah! For one thing, you freaking have this. You freaking have this. This is all I need. This is all I ever wanted. If you see my Mass Effect 3 playthrough, basically this and this. Which I didn't know this was here until like the, close to the end of the Mass Effect 3 playthrough. <laughs> but, god dang. Like, you put fishies in here, and last time I put jellyfish in here. Well, that, when I played Mass Effect 3, I put jellyfish in here, and jellyfish are my favorite. I don't think you have jellyfish in Mass Effect 2. I could be wrong, though. I don't think I am. But, god dang, like, who wouldn't want this? Like, who as a kid did not want to have an entire room made up of, like, you know, glass walls and aquarium wall? You know what I mean? And these! I love these! That's the Normandy SR2 Cerberus style. I think we can get the SR1 and we can get like Turian frigates and stuff. It's super fun. And there's music, but I like, I personally like, and I think Shepard would like the peace and quiet here. You know, you kind of hear the ship humming. Although it is kind of silly to me that you put the commanding officer up in the most sort of risky area at the very top of the ship, but... So whatever. Oh my gosh, you can get these couches in Mass Effect 3 for your house. <laughs> if you get the DLC. I totally didn't even realize. That's awesome. Oh, and I can... Oh yeah, yeah, I can use the bathroom. <laughs> I don't have a shower. I don't have a shower! Oh, wait, is... Really? 
Really? I mean, I know it would be really difficult to try and walk around it if there was, like, some sort of a thing blocking it off, but... But really? The water would get everywhere. It would get everywhere. I mean, I know there's this little cube. That's not gonna stop the water. And I have tons of storage space in here. I feel like I should... I feel like Shepard would have, like, a pistol and some spare ammo in there, you know? Um... And... And this! This I really like. Whoever you romance in Mass Effect 1, they put a picture of in your office here, which I really, really like. Um, yeah, I feel like, though, if, if I had, you know, if, if Shepard had put it on, that'd be one thing, but I feel like Cerberus, they didn't say anything, but they just, like, kind of put it there. It's like they're trying too hard to get in my good graces. And I love that you can check out the achievements in this game. So, uh, close your eyes if there are, I don't know if there are really any spoilers, but, um, yeah. So, um, I do have the, um, I think these are, yeah, the Shadow Broker ones, and then I have the Thief, did that, Evolve, Power, Personalized, Scientist, Fully Upgraded Weapon, 10 Technology, 15, which level 30 did I, what level am I? What level was my previous character? I don't know. Visit 100% of the planets in an unexplored cluster. Retrieve mineral resources. Oh, five missions, discover rest gaining. Uh, complete a mission, discover, complete one, okay. Incinerate, warp. See, it's way easier to get the achievements. I feel like they, they kind of dumbed down the achievements in Mass Effect 2 because in Mass Effect 1, you have to get 75 warp. Like, you have to use warp effect efficient or effectively 75 times. Uh, yeah, I can never get that one for some reason. I can never get the cryo ammo one to work. Hit. Right, 20 different targets with multiple biotic powers. Okay. And I love, I freaking love, though, how they keep track of it. I've got three of them out of 20, and I just need 17 more. I freaking love that they do that. This, I really want to try and get this time. Shoot and kill 20 enemies while they're knocked back by a punch. Because I'm a vanguard, so i got to be able to do that. Uh, Complete the game on insanity... Is there not a hardcore mode one? Ah, There isn't. It's just an insanity one. Oh, bummer. Well, I guess the uh we'll probably get the I mean, we'll hopefully get this, but we'll also we'll get the complete the Shadow Broker mission pack on Hardcore or Insanity, so we'll get that, and we'll hopefully get all these, and maybe the Punchback one, and maybe the Combined Biotic Powers one, so that's not too big a deal. In Aspect 1, I was really wanting to get a lot of the achievements, and I didn't get as many as I wanted this, ne this last time, but... So I like I like that you can access this stuff down here or you know or up here or down there. We need to go shopping for fish, Edie. It's time to go fish shopping. Uh CIC. Let's go to the CIC. And uh, I mean they're like, oh go to Omega and get Morden. I'm like, my old captain just emailed me. And doesn't actually know if I'm still alive or not. The man that I respect above all other men has just contacted me and wants to see me. And I gotta go see if my Spectre thing still works. Like, I gotta go check out the political situation for myself. So, this all needs to be done in person. I need to go. Oh my gosh, it's so shiny. Woo! Woo! -hoo! We're with Sahra Baric. Whoa, where are we? Jeez. Father, father, father. Um. Um. Oh, right. Okay, the scanning thing. I actually really, really miss being able to go on the planet. This that really bums me out that you can't do that in this one. Standard methane, ammonia, gas giant, and more can is the main source of helium three fuel run by criminal cartels. 
where pirates can hurt find fuel, ammunition, and toxic against gambling and central companionship at any hour. We'll, we'll scan. This is kind of fun, the scanning thing for a while. After a while, it gets kind of annoying, but. But it's kind of fun that, like, you have to, like, kind of choose, you know? Like, it's not just like, here it is, it's like, you gotta. Away. Oh, I don't, I have a limited Research amount projects. of. Platinum is used to upgrade sniper rifles, shotguns, and medical equipment. Excellent. Good to know. But we got a little bit of both. So that's nice. Probe away. In research projects, iridium is used to upgrade heavy weapons, submachine guns, and assault rifles. Okay. I do like the upgrades too. I like the upgrade system. I'm pretty sure I do anyway. Okay, board now! It's kind of weird that when you look at it, you can't. You know, it's like unexplored until you click on it. Whoa. Huh. <laughs> Alright, let's just, uh, we don't want to go in there. Can't go in there anyway. Um. And I love that, like, I, I do love the, like, traveling to different systems. It's, it's, it's so fun. And, like, look at that freaking background. Like, oh my gosh. Oh, right. We should, um, we'll max out our probes and buy some fuel. Okay. Got everything. Oh, my gosh. I guess we'll call it here. I don't want, to, I don't want it to go too terribly long. Um... But yeah, well, on the next one we will head over to um, the Citadel and go see Captain Anderson, because that is a man who has done a lot for us and sacrificed much for us and for humanity as a whole, and he deserves our utmost respect. So, thank you all for joining me. I will see you in the next one.